This video is over lesson 23, subtracting mixed numbers and regrouping for my seventh grade math class. Regrouping really is just another way of saying borrowing. So in this lesson, we're going to take a look at subtracting mixed numbers where it requires borrowing. During subtraction with whole numbers, when we borrow, from a higher place value, it is always worth 10 of the smaller place value. And that's because of the nature of our place values. Our, our place values are based on 10. Uh, if you think about it, if you count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, those are all single digits. But then when I go to 10, it spills over to a new place value, and now we have a double digit number. Well, if I were to count by 10s, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, those are all two-digit numbers, but if I go one more, 100, when I get to that tenth 10, I spill over to a new place value because all of our place values are based on 10. So when I borrow 1 from a higher place value, it is always worth 10 of the smaller place values. For mixed numbers, we cannot count on the same consistency. Fractions are not in any place value, and therefore, when we borrow from a whole number, it will often not be worth 10 in the fraction. Fractions are too flexible, so it's going to depend on what kind of fraction you have, how much you get. So by way of example, we're going to take a look, before we get to our subtracting, we're just going to look at regrouping. So you can see here I've got four circles. So if we imagine these being four pies, and I have three pies that basically are uncut. So ignore the, the little line there. They're three whole pies, though. At the very least, nothing's missing out of them. This last pie right here, has been cut up into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 eighths. It's been cut up into eighths. And we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 slices still in it. So if we put these together, how much pie do we have? We have 3 and 5 eighths. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when we regroup, what we're going to do is we're going to borrow a whole number and slice it up into a fraction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this first pie here, or this pie that's closest to my fraction, and I'm going to cut it up into eighths. So that means I'm going to have to extend, and I know this is a little dark. Hopefully, uh, I think that's coming through on the video. So I'm going to extend that there. That cuts it in half. I'm going to go across here. So that, you can see that. So now I've cut it into fourths. So if I cut each of these in half, then I should have my eighths. So if we take a look at this now, we have two pies that are still whole. But then I, in these two pie tins, which have been cut up into eighths, we now have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 slices. And so what you need to see here, ladies and gentlemen, is when we're dealing with eighths, if we borrow from a whole number or regroup one of our whole numbers, well, if these are eighths, then a whole number is going to give us eight eighths more. And so 5 eighths plus these 8 eighths makes a total of 13 eighths. And so when we come to our work, what we're going to do to show that is we are going to borrow from the 3, so it's going to become a 2. And then here, remember that if I cut this up into eighths, I'm not getting 10 more. This isn't going to be 15. No, 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 no we get eight more slices. 
8 eighths more. So 8 more than 15 is the 13 we have right there. So you're always going to get your denominator more slices. So if my denominator is 8, I'm going to get 8 more than what I had before. All right, let's try another one. So down here, this time I've only got two whole numbers. And then this one has been cut up into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And there are five slices there. So this diagram represents 2 and 5, 6. So if we imagine regrouping here, borrowing from one of my whole numbers, I'm going to take this guy right here. I'm going to, just like that was went all the way through, I'm going to bring this all the way through. And then I'm going to cut this so that way, to the best of my ability, I've got six equal slices. So there's my six equal slices there. Hopefully you can see that there. It's, I know the circles are a bit dark. So once I regroup, now I've only got one whole pie. But in these two pie tins, which are cut up into six, we now have the five we had before plus the six that came from cutting up this whole pie. So five plus six gives me a total of 11. So one and 11 sixths when we regroup. So over here, that would look like borrowing one from two. So if you borrow one from two, you're left with just one over. And then remember, this is always gonna get bigger by the denominator. So it was five, we're gonna add six more. And there's my one and 11 six. My one and 11 six. And then in this final example down here, this time I have five whole numbers and then two fifths of this pi. So five and two fifths. So when we regroup this, I'm going to do it here first this time. I'm going to borrow one of my whole pies. So I'm only going to have four left over now. And then remember, this is going to get bigger by the denominator. So it was a two. It's going to get five more for a total of seven. And so let's check it with our diagrams. So if I cut up this guy right here, I'm going to have to cut him into fifths. So trying to catch the light there so you can see how I cut that up. Basically try to mimic the lines over here. So if I total this up now, now that I've cut that up, I only have four whole pies. Well, there's my four whole pies. But then over here, these guys are cut up into fifths. I have two of them here, plus five more there. Sure enough, there's my seven fifths. So ladies and gentlemen, with this being established, we're gonna go ahead and flip the page and practice this skill a bit. So in our first example here, I have three and five eighths, and we are subtracting one and seven eighths. And so what we see is we do not have enough room, or we, excuse me, we do not have enough up top to subtract. Five minus seven, it's not enough. So we need to borrow. I'm gonna borrow from my three, so my three whole pies will become two whole pies. And then remember that this numerator will always get bigger by its denominator. And so it was a five plus eight more now makes it a 13.
and now we can subtract. 13 eighths minus 7 eighths is 6 eighths. A 2 minus 1 is a 2. Or excuse me, not 2, 1. Goodness. What was I saying? Sorry, guys. 2 minus 1 is 1. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we do need to check when we're working with fractions if we can reduce. And sure enough, this time I can reduce. I can divide by 2 over 2. So if I divide this by 2 over 2, I'm going to get 1. And then 6 divided by 2 is 3. 8 divided by 2 is 4. So my final answer there is 1 and 3 fourths. All right, take a look at the next example, 8 and 1 fifth minus 4 and 3 fifths. So 8 and 1 fifth minus 4 and 3 fifths. So 1 fifth minus 3 fifth, that's not enough. I'm going to need to borrow from my 8. My 8 is going to become a 7. And then that means my 1 is going to turn into 5 more than it used to be. Since the denominator is 5, it'll be 5 more than it used to be. So 1 plus 5 gives me 6. So now I have 6 fifths minus 3 fifths. Well, 6 minus 3 is 3. So we have 3 fifths, and then 7 minus 4 is 3. Check to see if you can reduce it. We can't. So my answer is 3 and 3 fifths. All right, next up. 9 and 1 sixth minus 7 and 3 fourths. Now right off the bat, 1 minus 3 we know we can't do, but that's actually not going to be important yet. Because remember, ladies and gentlemen, in order to add or subtract fractions, we must have a common denominator. So with a 6 and a 4, I do not have a common denominator. So we're going to need to multiply these both by forms of 1 to change those denominators into the same thing. So remember, this is based off of multiplication. So you're thinking 6 times what and 4 times what else could have the same answer. So, and there's a, a ton of answers out there. For example, I could do 6 times 8 is 48, and 4 times 12 is 48. That would work. However, the smaller the denominator we can make, common denominator we can make, the, the easier our lives are going to be. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you're ever stumped, you could always just multiply your denominators together, and that will always give you a common denominator. So 6 times 4 is 24. 24 is a common denominator there. However, it's not the smallest. Turns out that if we do 6 times 2, so this will be 2 over 2, and if we do 4 times 3, so this will be 3 over 3, then we can get a common denominator of 12. Up top, my whole number is still there. And then I have 1 times 2 is 2. 6 times 2 is 12. Down here, I still have my whole number 7. Then 3 times 3 is 9. And 4 times 3 is 12. So by changing this to a common denominator, we see what these values really are and how they compare. So if before you thought 1 minus 3, ooh, you know, that's just a little too big. Well, now we see it's really more like a 2 minus 9. So it's really not big enough. That 9 was too big. So i got to borrow. I'm going to borrow from my 9. It's going to become an 8. So therefore, my 2 is going to increase by this denominator 12. So 2 plus 12 more is 14. 14 minus 9 is 5. So this is 5 twelfths. And 8 minus 7 is 1. I cannot reduce 5 twelfths. So final answer, 1 and 5 twelfths. Next up. 7 and 1 third minus 2 and 4 ninths. So looking for a common denominator here, you could always do 3 times 9 is 27. 27 absolutely is a common denominator. 
but it's not the smallest. This time we can take advantage of the fact that 3 times 3 is 9, and this already is a 9. So up top I'm going to multiply by 3 over 3. So my whole number is still 7, but now I have 1 times 3 is 3, and 3 times 3 is 9. The bottom guy is all set to go. So all I'm going to do is put an equal sign here to say that he is equal to himself. And now we subtract. 3 ninths minus 4 ninths can't do it, got to borrow. So I borrow from the 7, it becomes a 6. So that whole number is going to add 9 more to this 3. So 3 plus 9 is 12. 12 ninths minus 4 ninths gives me 8 ninths, and 6 minus 2 is 4. 8 ninths cannot be reduced, so my answer is 4 and 8 ninths. All right, ladies and gentlemen, which brings us now to our next example, where instead of having two mixed numbers, I have a whole number and a mixed number. So first of all, when we line these up, we line these up with like things together. So my whole number 3 will line up with my whole number 1, and then my 7 eighths will just go next to that 1. So basically what we have here is we have a 3 and 0 eighths. Oops, sorry, my paper just slipped. So we need to think about this as basically 3 all by itself is really 3 and 0 eighths. So when I borrow from the 3, it'll become a 2. But then over here, we're going to get 8 eighths more than 0. Well, that's just 8 eighths. So 8 more than 0 is 8. Now, 8 minus 7 is 1, and 2 minus 1 is 1. So 1 and 1 8 is my answer. All right, on to the last page here. So same idea here, but we're doing mixed number percentages. Uh, it's the exact same concept, guys. This time, we just have a percent sign. So the percent sign is going to act like a label. Uh, mathematically, it's not going to do anything for us right now. So I've got my 100. I'm going to line that up with my 27. Then the 13, 15 so goes off to the side. And then once that's all set, I'll put in my label. And I want to line those labels up as well. So nothing minus 13 fifteenths. I would, I would save myself some time on this one. And I would just borrow 1 from 100. So that'll be 99. And then over here, that 1 will be 15 more than nothing. So that'll become 15 fifteenths, since 15 is the denominator. Now 15 fifteenths minus 3 15, 13 fifteenths, excuse me, is 2 fifteenths. And copy down the percent signs. And now my whole numbers, 9 minus 7 is 2, and 9 minus 2 is 7. 72 and 2 fifths, excuse me, 2 fifteenths percent. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do just a few practice problems. And then we are done with this lesson. So please grab your books and open up to the practice problems for lesson 23. You can pause the video while you do that. And here we go. A. There were seven pies in the shelf. If the server removes two and one third pies, how many pies will be on the shelf? So, well, seven to start with. 
and then 2 and 1 third are removed. So 2 and 1 third are removed. So as we just did here a second ago, I'm going to borrow from the 7, it becomes a 6. And since the denominator is 3, I'm going to end up getting 3 thirds. So 3 more than 0, 3 thirds. 3 thirds minus 1 third is 2 thirds. And then 6 minus 4, or excuse me, I got ahead of myself. 6 minus 2 is 4. There we go. And this is a story problem, so we do need to give the proper label. So 4 and 2 thirds what? 4 and 2 thirds pies. Skip a line. Let's take a look at B. So B, they give it to you written horizontally. Ladies and gentlemen, do not write that horizontally. You're not going to do the problem horizontally, so don't waste your time. Write the problem the way you're going to do it. So remember to keep everything nice and neat between the lines. 6 and 2 fifths minus 1 and 4 fifths. Well, I can't do 2 fifths minus 4 fifths, so I'm going to borrow from the 6. It'll become a 5. And then over here, because the denominator is 5, we'll get 5 more than 2. So 2 and then 5 more makes 7 fifths. So 7 fifths minus 4 fifths is 3 fifths. And then 5 minus 1 is 4. 4 and 3 fifths. C, 5 and 1 sixth minus 1 and 5 sixths. Same idea, borrow from the 5, it'll become a 4. And then this 1 will become 6 more than it used to be. So 6 more than 1 is 7. Now 7 sixths minus 5 sixths is 2 sixths. 4 minus 1 is 3. Ah, don't forget. See if you can reduce, and we can here. I can divide this by 2 over 2, and so this would be 3. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 6 divided by 2 is 3. Final answer is 3 and 1 third. All right, D. I'm going to start by copying my whole numbers. So I line up my whole numbers, then I'm going to copy my fraction, and then finally, I'll copy my percent signs so that everything lines up nicely and there's space for everything we need. So again here, ladies and gentlemen, I wouldn't bother. You, you could borrow from the, the 1, make it a 0, turn this into a 10, borrow from that, make it a 9. This then turn into a 10, borrow from that, it becomes 9, and then we finally get our fraction. Or guys, just save yourself some time. Borrow from the whole numbers in general and make the 199. So if I borrow that with a denominator of 2, we're going to have 2 more than nothing. So 2 halves. 2 halves minus 1 half is 1 half. And we can go ahead and put our percent sign down. Then over here, 9 minus 2 is 7. And 9 minus 1 is 8. So this is 87 and a half percent. And then last but not least, E. E, we have 83 and we have a 16. It's 83 and one third. It's 16 and two thirds. And now we know where the percent signs go. So one third minus two third, I'm going to have to borrow. I borrow from the three, it becomes a two. And then this one becomes three more than it used to be. So three more than one is four. Four thirds minus two thirds is two thirds. Percent sign. Now over here, uh, two minus six, I need to borrow. Now this is just plain old normal borrowing with place values. So if I borrow one from my tens place, I'm going to get 10 more, so that'll turn into a 12 there. 
12 minus 6 is 6, and 7 minus 1 is 6. So 83 and 1 third percent minus 16 and 2 thirds percent is 66 and 2 thirds percent. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is our lesson.